Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us now call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you said, sent Rose of Lima on fire with your love, so that secluded from the world in the austerity of a life of penance, she might give herself to you alone. Grant, we pray, that through intercession we may tread the paths of life on earth and drink at the stream of your delights in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We ask you, brothers and sisters, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our assembling with him, not to be shaken out of your minds suddenly or to be alarmed either by a spirit or by an oral statement or by a letter allegedly from us to the effect that the day of the Lord is at hand. No one deceive you in any way. To this end, he has also called you through our gospel to possess the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the traditions that you were taught, either by an oral statement or by a letter of ours. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting encouragement, and good hope through his grace. Encourage your hearts and strengthen them in every good deed and word. The word of the Lord. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world firm not to be moved. He governs the peoples with the equity. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills it resound. Let the place be joyful and all that's in them. Then shall all the trees of the forest exult. The, the Lord, Lord comes to judge the earth. Before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to rule the earth. He shall rule the world with justice and the peoples with his constancy. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. The word of God is living and effective, able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You pay tithes of mint and dill and common, and have neglected the weightier, mightier things of the law, judgment and mercy and fidelity. But these you should have done without neglecting the others. Blind guides who strain out the gnat and swallow the camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You cleanse the outside of cup and dish, but inside are full of plunder and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisees, cleanse first the inside of the cup, so that the outside also may be clean. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> The gospel today is part of that, what is known as the seven woes. The seven woes of the Pharisees 
with a list of criticism of the Lord against the scribes and the Pharisees, a criticism against mostly of their hypocrisy. So there are seven of that list. Um, and what we read today are the fourth and the fifth. The fourth um, woe, the fourth criticism um, by Jesus against the Pharisees. You pay tithes of mint and dill. In other words, for the Israelites, you're probably familiar with um, the 10% tithing. In fact, uh, I know even among Catholics, uh, many Catholics uh, pay tithes because um, maybe in their checks when they give their weekly collection, some of them would have cents, like, you know, 25 and 33 cents. So probably they really compute uh, to the last details. Um, for them, uh, for, the, for the Israelites, especially for the Pharisees, they were so meticulous <clears throat> that everything, 10%, would really go to the Lord, including harvest. But even to the point of nitpicking on things like mint. Like if you have a garden in the backyard of tomatoes, a 10% of that should go to the Lord. And the Lord said, well, okay, it's nice, you know, when you nitpick on things, but Sometimes you are so critical and meticulous on tiny things and details, but you forget what is very essential. And so he talks about issues of justice, issues of mercy and compassion of faith. Because we know that it could happen that we become so meticulous of following the rules and forget to be kind. Say, for example, um, coming to church on Sunday. That is the law. We know that. And yet we also know that there are people who might not be able to come to church on Sunday. They're not able to drive. Uh, they are sick. Or they work, you know, uh, or frontliners, you know, uh, or men and women in uniform, or medical frontliners. Some of them work on Sundays. So to say that, well, you know what, you violate the law. I don't care whether you work on Sunday or not. You have to be in church. Well, you know, and so the Lord says, sometimes you forget to be kind. You forget to be merciful simply because you want to emphasize a rule. Again, Christ is not criticizing uh, the consensus following of the rules. No, rather, Christ was criticizing the Pharisees because of their attitude of hypocrisy and self-righteousness. I am better off because I am better because, you know, I follow even the tiniest detail of the law. You, in other, on the other hand, you do not even follow the law. The Lord said, that's self-righteousness. The details are important, yes, but there's something even mightier. Kindness, goodness, compassion, justice. And Christ is to emphasize that. And the second part is the fifth woe. You cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of plunder and self-indulgence. Again, being so critical about the externals. Say, um, where the tabernacle is placed, for example. <clears throat> it should be in the right, it should be on the left, it should be in the center, and, you know, <clears throat> how many candles should be on the altar, Other, it should be six, it should be seven, um, you know, where the flower should be placed, and where the priest should sit, and what kind of decorations, and how many lights. Sometimes, probably would say, oh, come on, Father, no one does. Well, yes, some people does that. Some people, in fact. And so the Lord says, listen, okay, externals are good. Because when we pray, uh, 
some of the external <laughs> gestures are very important. When we kneel, when we stand, when we sit, you know, when we clap, while we pray, when we raise our hands, those are also important. But the Lord says, there's even something far more important. The inside. Because we could actually be presenting an outside that seems to be holy, seems to be <laughs> kind and nice. But inside, the Lord says, is filled with self-righteousness, with anger, with resentment. Someone who could be receiving communion is, you know, um, in one's Sunday's best, very pious, coming to receive communion. And yet in that person's heart is filled with anger and resentment, you know, and anger against other people for no reasons at all. And so the Lord says, well, listen, externals are good. Yes. But look into what is internal. And so the criticisms of the Lord against the Pharisees also some actually applies to us. You know, they were not simply criticisms of the Lord against the hypocrisy of the Pharisees, but we can also look at that as Christ's admonition to us. Being critical about the details to the point of being negligent of what is mightier than the Lord, the Lord says, being kind, being compassionate, being merciful. You know, they're saying um, sometimes it is better to be kind than to be correct. And I think that is true. Um, you know, when, when someone does something wrong, for example, um, I could embarrass you in public because you're wrong. Or I could actually say, well, you know what? Okay, it's, it's fine. But to be kind sometimes is better than to be right. Like even when we correct you as parents or grandparents, when you correct your children, you can. But not in the presence of the whole world. You, know, you don't correct your children through social media and Facebook. Oh, my daughter just, you know, uh, sometimes it's nicer to be to be kind than to be correct. And so the Lord today says, listen, okay, we have to follow the rules. There's, the re there's a reason and purpose why the rules are there. But there are also reasons behind the rules. And that is what is inside. Look into your heart. Why do we follow the rules? What are the motivating factors why we follow the rules. Is there compassion in our heart? Is there mercy in your heart? Or, on the contrary, is there self-righteousness? Is there anger? Is there contempt in the heart? Because otherwise, we could be following even the tiniest details of the law, but if the heart is not really fully and correctly directed to the Lord, then following the, the rules and the law, would just be like the Pharisees, externalists, to show off. So today, I think the challenge is um, very important. You know, holiness is not a competition. You know, uh, who is more holier and who is less holier. Holiness is just our day-to-day -day struggles in life. How we try to feel the presence of God in our day-to-day -day lives. Try the best we can. We don't always succeed. We fall many times every day. And yet, it's not really a matter of saying, I am better than the others, but rather to say, Lord, today I'll try to be as good as I can. Maybe the others are already doing better than myself. Bless them. But I'll try to do my best today and better again tomorrow. So we pray for that uh, faith and state of life. Lord, bless us every day in our daily living of our lives. We want to follow the rules. We want to follow the commandments. We want to be the best Christian disciple as best as we can. There are many times that we fail and we fall. Help us rise again and fill our hearts always with that great desire that whatever we do every day, 
the intentions we have should always be to give greater glory to you and to you alone. Confident in God's abundant love for us, let us now speak our prayers with one voice. We pray for Pope Francis and his work as shepherd of our church. May the Lord guide him in his servant leadership. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for world leaders. May the Lord bless their efforts to foster justice and peace among nations and people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for those whose hearts are burdened by sin and who struggle to trust in God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. We pray for all who have died. May the Lord welcome them into his loving embrace and bring them to eternal rest in him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. And today we pray in a very special way for Melissa J. Bergman and for the intentions of Valerie Post from this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. And for all of us gathered today, for ourselves, for those who ask for our prayers, for whom we promise to pray for, Pray for our families and our loved ones. May the Lord always keep our families and loved ones safe and healthy. And for all the intentions that we hold dear in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Loving God, source of all wisdom, we humbly share our prayers with you and ask that you hear them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us our bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of divine work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed Blessed you, Lord Lord. Lord. Let us now pray that my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people the adoption to the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, and all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we will be gathered into one with the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullest of charity together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints that pleased you throughout the ages, we marry to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form a divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with and let us offer each other the sign of this peace. peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Complete within us, Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and grace lay perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ, O Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And the Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a beautiful day.